come on in come on in it's time for the top 10 at 10 it's monday how is everybody doing tonight hopefully your week is off to an awesome start i am nikedra the nurse practitioner to teach and train you on ways to get and stay healthy coming to you for the top 10 at 10 monday through friday at 10 p.m so hopefully you all have opportunity to Come in and let's get started with the broadcast for tonight. So while I'm logging into my other device, let's go right into the mission of Zing Life Services, which is to improve the quality of life within the community, basic life skills, self-promotion and wellness, and self-esteem development are the hallmarks of the organization's programs and projects. We help to find ways to decrease barriers and inequalities as it relates to health. So that's who we are and that's what we do. So some of what we do is to come with, to you live at 10 p.m. just to give you some updates and some ways um, to improve your health. So it's Monday. What do we do on Monday? Monday is your motivation day. So Monday is motivation. Hashtag motivational Monday. So you know oftentimes people complain about Monday being the first day of the week, you talk about how the weekend is not quite long enough. I must admit, sometimes I feed into that as well. I worked this past weekend, and so um, Monday comes quickly when you haven't had as long of a weekend as you'd like. But my motivation for today, I had a motivation tip, and so here we go. So, when your why is big enough, you'll find your how. So that's the Motivational Monday tip for today. When your why is big enough, you'll find your how. Interesting, right? Very interesting. So instead of saying, I don't know how I'm going to do it, I don't know how I'm going to get this done, when your why is big enough, you actually will figure out your how. So let me give you a couple examples. People often have some very serious health conditions, right? So they are oftentimes, um, heart attack is a big one. So people will have a heart attack. It comes without warning. We call it the big one. We say you are a miracle. It's amazing that you're here. But one of the things you need to do is stop some of the things that you have been accustomed to doing. And one of those things is smoking. A lot of things, but that's just one of the things that I'm going to throw out there. And so some people will, miraculously enough, they will stop smoking. Go what we call cold turkey. Because why? They've had this heart attack that almost took their life. That they recognize that to live is better than to not live. And if you want to continue to live and not reverse the things they've done to you to help you live, then you quit smoking. So their why becomes bigger than their how because that's probably not the first time that they've contemplated quitting smoking, right? They probably thought that it was a thing to do. They probably said, oh yeah, I should quit smoking, but it was just one of those things that because they weren't affected that they didn't feel the need to do. But then they had a heart attack. Then they had to have a serious operation and then they were told to stop smoking and all of a sudden their why was big enough. So the motivational... Monday's motivation is when your why is big enough, you will find your how. Because lots of times people will say, I don't know how I'm going to get all that work done. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to do that. But when your why is big enough, then you figure out a way how to do it. Let me tell you another thing. It's back to school time. It is back to school time. And many of you, hello to those who are watching. Many of you have kids who are going back to school. Some of you support some of your family members. Some of you give to organizations for back to school drives. And so this time of year, you spend all this money for kids to go to camp. You've done all these things over the summer. And now you have to pay money for these kids to go back to school to get the latest and the greatest, all of what they need. And you say, I don't know how I'm going to have all the money to be able to get all the things that this kid needs on this list. They need so much. I don't know how I'm going to be able to get all the things that they need on the list. But when school starts, guess what? You figure it out. You figure it out. Why? Because it's your child. Why? Because it's somebody you love. And most of the time, you will figure out what to do to get it done. 
You'll figure out a way to get their school clothes. You'll figure out a way to get their book pack. You'll figure out a way to get it done. If it's to go to a back to school drive, if it's to figure out, okay, I need to allot a certain amount of funds over a period of time. If it's to say, yeah, we probably can't indulge in this on next week because we need to pay some back to school supplies. You figure it out. Why? Because your why is big enough so that you figure out how you are going to do it. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Nikeidra Brown. I'm the nurse practitioner with Zing Life Services that teaches and trains you about ways to get and stay healthy. So we help to motivate you into your next level of health. We're talking about your motivation for tonight, your motivation for life. When your why is big enough, you will find your how. And also I have some pins that I need some help with because some of you probably know what these pins are. I had them on the news feed today and lots of times we are seeing these pins this over the summer. So I wanted to hit on that just for a second. But just remember that when your why is big enough, you will figure out your how. So sometimes you think about why and how you're going to do things. But when you get those two things really synced, they kind of work themselves out. Now, if you're watching this on replay, make sure you put hashtag replay. Some of you get up in the morning and you watch this. So I appreciate you all watching hashtag replay if you're watching on replay. And hello to those who are here now. So if your health why, so we talked about the heart attack. If your health why is big enough, then you'll figure out how you're going to do it. So people say I'm borderline diabetic. That is a pet peeve of mine. But I just go with it and cringe inside when I hear it. I'm a borderline diabetic. That really just means their why is not big enough for them to change their how. Because if they acknowledge the fact that, yeah, I am on my way to becoming a diabetic. And right now I need to make some changes so that I can help improve the quality of my life. Then it would change. Their how as it relates to eating, as it relates to exercise, as it relates to doing the things to improve their health would change, but they are saying, I'm a borderline diabetic. So at that point, their why is not quite big enough. Another thing is people will say, oh, my pressure runs high. Y'all know it. My pressure, it runs high sometimes. It's not high all the time, but sometimes things cause my pressure to go up. Their why is not quite big enough. Because if their why was big enough, then they would acknowledge the fact that their blood pressure is high. That that is something that they should work on. That is something that they may need to change their diet. They may need to exercise. They need to figure out how to get it done. But because the why is not big enough, they haven't figured out the why yet. And most of the times, it takes that situation where they can not have to think about. That heart attack. It takes that stroke. It takes that thing that is immediate for them to realize, oh, I should wake up. Their why then becomes bigger, and then they figure out how they're going to get it done. So motivation for today, when your why is big enough, you will figure out your how. You do it all the time for your kids. You do it all the time for your kids. I ask people all the time, what's your motivation? What is your motivation for getting healthy? I want to live a longer life for my kids. I want to live a long life so I can see my grandkids. I want to live a long life. Most of the time, it's for other people. So your why is really conditioned on other people. And so how you do things is conditioned based on the fact that you are needed for other people. So when your why is big enough, it causes you to find how you're going to do it. How are you going to find the money to get those school supplies that you need? You'll find it because you, your why is big enough. Your kids, right? How are you going to find the money to put those kids in those sports and to do all the things that they want to do? You'll figure it out. Why? Because it's your kids. But when it's time for you to become your own why, that's oftentimes a struggle. That's oftentimes a struggle because yourself as the why is not big enough for you to figure out how to get it done for you. When you are your own why, it's very interesting that you can't figure out how to make it done because it's you. So that's what you need to do. Figure out how to align your how and your why. Because when your why is big enough, you will figure out how to do it. So that leads me into why we are having Choose You. So we are having a walk. 
we're going to talk about this pen. I have it right here. For those of you, that's the title of this broadcast. What really is this pen anyway? We're going to talk about this thing tonight because some of you have it. Some of you know people who have it. And some of you have no idea how to use it if you had to be the one to administer it. So let's talk about it. But before we do, let's talk about this. Choose you. Choose you. Walk for life. September the 8th. So we are having a walkathon in Chacawinity, North Carolina. I'm super excited because it's given us the opportunity to be able to get people step by step changing the face of what health looks like. So often we talk about why our community had increased rates of diabetes, increased rates of high blood pressure, increased rates of obesity. And so this gives us opportunity to fellowship. We're having a walk, health screens, entertainment, family, food, fun, music, all that jazz. And so we are still having registration. Registration is open. Vendors will be there. If you want to be a vendor, you can still do that. And if you want to be a sponsor, you can do that as well. So the information is on our page. I'll put the link in the comments. But here you go one more time for Choose You. All right, so you can go to our website, www.zinglifeservices.com to find more details about the walk. It's going to be an awesome event. It's going to change the focus and the face of health in our community one step at a time. So that is what you're going to hear about this month. Now, let's talk about this pen. Do y'all know what this pen is I'm talking about? Who recognized the pen just then? Who recognized the pen? If you're here, I must can't see comments tonight because I'm not seeing any comments come through. So somebody say hello so I can see if you all are here because I don't see any comments. And I know somebody has had to say something, right? So if you're here, say hello so I can see comments. If you're watching this on replay, I see you, Vanessa. Thank you. Maybe nobody didn't say anything. I don't know. But if you're watching this on replay, hashtag replay as well. Let's look at this pen that we have because it is one that you may have seen. This is just a trainer, right? So you probably have seen the real thing. This is a trainer. Who knows what this pen is? You may actually can see the name of it there. Who knows what this pen is? Who knows somebody who has one of these pens? They've actually changed a little bit over the course um, of the year too because they've got a new brand, but this still simulates um, kind of what it looks like. My internet is messing up, it may be. Oh, I hope it clears up. So what is this? This is an EpiPen, you probably can see it. This is an EpiPen. So this is a trainer because in our first day class we teach people how to use EpiPen. Of course, if it's yours, you should know how to use it. But what is that pen anyway? Because sometimes you'll hear people say, do you have your pen with you? Oh, you're allergic to peanuts. Do you have your pen? And you might say, what kind of pen are you talking about? What pen are you talking about? Because they're really not talking about this type of pen, right? This doesn't have any pen medicine in it. So this has some medicine in it. It's called epinephrine. Epinephrine is the name of the medicine, so to keep from saying that, we call it Epi for short. Epi for short, and so it's an Epi pen. So this is medication that is giving in an allergic reaction. What are some allergic reactions that we might need an Epi pen for? Because these allergic reactions are life-threatening. They cause shortness of breath. They cause wheezing. They cause mouth swelling. They are anaphylactic type allergic reactions what are some of the things that people have allergic reactions to and they need one of these pens so the epi pen it must be written by a prescriber so you can't just go and find it over the counter it has to be written by a provider and so you have to also get it from the pharmacy so when you get it from the pharmacy like any medication that you get from the pharmacy it should be well maintained it should be kept under certain circumstances the important thing about an EpiPen is that it is inside of a carrier. Um, and so because it's inside of a carrier, you also want to make sure that you shield it some from the environment, particularly because it's so hot this time of the year. Thank you, Vanessa. Bee stings. So I asked, what are some of the reasons why people need one of these pens? 
Why would you see people carrying these pens saying, hey, I have an EpiPen? Bee sting, common one. Bee sting is a common one. Most commonly during the summer, it's mosquito bites. So people have these during the summer, not mosquito bites, insect bites. Yeah, everybody would be carrying them if they were allergic to mosquitoes, right? Bee stings and insect bites. So during the summer, we see lots of people with EpiPen because they're at cookouts, because they're outside, because they are fellowshipping. My grandma used to have one because she um, was allergic to ants and bees. And so she had an EpiPen. Yes, Tykesha, allergies. So people are allergic to certain things. And it's not just a swell or itch type allergic. It's a I can't breathe type allergic. It's my eyes are swelling. My mouth is swelling. I'm wheezing. I'm short of breath. I am literally going to die if I don't get some medicine to help open up my airway. If I don't get some medicine to help reverse what my body is doing because of this insect bite. Other reasons people sometimes eat foods that put them into an anaphylactic type shock. What are some of those foods that you hear of people eating and it puts them into this state of emergency, if you will? Commonly this time of year, it's berries actually. So people eat berries and the berries have this type of um, anaphylactic or serious condition where people need to use the EpiPen. What other foods do people eat that they need to use EpiPens for? Do you know people with EpiPens? Do you have an EpiPen? Shellfish, peanuts, absolutely. Absolutely. Also, there are some medications. So sometimes there are some medications that people should not be taking. And because sometimes medications are um, combination medicines, you might not know that there's actually aspirin inside of something that you're taking. Pepto-Bismol, for instance, has aspirin in it. Um, and so if you're allergic to aspirin and you take Pepto-Bismol without recognizing that it has aspirin in it, you may need one of these. And so that is why people should carry their EpiPens with them. So most people who have an EpiPen, you've had some type of reaction whereby you know it required you to go seek emergency help, where you had a bad enough reaction where they said to you, you need to carry one of these in case you are exposed to that again. There you go, Tykesha. So you have an EpiPen. Do you carry it with you all the time? A-L-L, all of the time. I'm glad you're in the broadcast to give us some perspective. So most people who carry one of these, you just don't carry it because you thought it was a good idea for you to have it in your purse or in your bag. You have it because you had some type of reaction. Because that reaction was serious enough whereby if you were to have that reaction again or whereby you were to eat those foods again or whereby you were to constantly be exposed to those things again, you may not know how your body will respond. And so instead of taking the chance, you have this EpiPen. And so most people try to avoid the offending agent. So if you know what you're allergic to, you try to avoid it. But like I said, sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you aren't sure or you, you don't know. In particular, if you go to restaurants. Now, I do know some people who have an allergy to certain foods, seeded foods, so like tomatoes. I know this because I'm not allergic to tomatoes, but I don't like tomatoes, right? I don't like tomatoes. And so I will eat out sometimes and I will say no tomatoes. And guess what happens? Take a guess. No tomatoes. Yes, I'm that person who has to um, personalize my food. It, it, it rarely can come out as is. I'm, I'm the one who has to no tomatoes, but add onions, no sauce, no pepper. Yeah, I'm that person. But I don't like tomatoes. And so I will say no tomatoes. And when my food comes out, what do I see sometimes? What do I see that lets me know that there have been some tomatoes on my food. Y'all know what I see. I see those little seeds, right? I see those little seeds and sometimes that little stuff that's inside of tomato. And I don't like tomatoes, but I'm not allergic to tomatoes. And so what I make a point to do is to bring it to the attention of the server who I know is not, in most cases, 
preparing the food, but you can imagine what would happen if somebody eats said food and they have an allergic reaction to food that they thought should not have tomatoes on it, but actually it did. And some of the seeds gets into their food and because they are allergic, they have a response, right? So I always bring it to the attention to say, you know what, I'm not allergic, but if I were, you could kill me. This might kill me. Yeah, it seems a little far-fetched. And my husband always says, you know, you're really going overboard. But I said, you know what, it's better to have this conversation now than for them to have somebody's life on their hands when they go into some type of anaphylactic shock or some type of reaction in the restaurant. Because not everybody carries this with them. So I see you carry yours with you all the time, and I appreciate it because most people don't. Not everybody carries this with them. They know they're allergic. Yeah, I'm allergic to peanuts. I just won't eat anything with peanuts. Well, what about if they're frying your food in peanut oil? Or what about if it's peanuts mixed in with something that, and you didn't know it? So they're not carrying their EpiPen with them all the time. And so because of that, if they were to go into some type of reaction, they would know it. Sometimes the people around them don't know. Do your, does your family know you have this? And do they know what you're allergic to? Because sometimes they don't. And so what happens is the people around you, they don't know that you're allergic to peanuts. Or they don't know that you're allergic to shellfish. Or they don't know that you're allergic to ants. And so if something happens, you may have the pen, but you may not be able to administer it yourself because you are stressed. Your body is under reaction due to whatever the agent is. And so if you aren't able to administer your own EpiPen, which you can, but if you are not able to, your family and those of you and those around you should know that you have one and they should know how to administer it. So that is an important takeaway. Super important takeaway because people around you sometimes don't know that you have an EpiPen. And because you can't always be alert or you aren't always able to give yourself your own pen, then people around you need to know. Now, how do those people know how to actually administer the EpiPen if you haven't taught them, right? Because they don't ever expect that they'll have to give it to you. So how do they figure it out in first aid? They take a first aid class or they get a trainer, and they practice with the trainer. You don't want them practicing with your real pen, obviously, because those things are expensive. But they train to figure out how to do it. Now, most cases, they have the directions written out. You'll see directions on this, too. In most cases, they're trying to write those directions out because they realize not everybody goes to a first aid class, right? Not everybody goes to a first aid class. Not everybody even realizes that this thing even exists. And so if your family knows, yep, not all your friends know, but yes, the instructions are on the pen, just like here. However, you know, if I'm, if I'm having trouble breathing, I kind of want somebody who knows how to do this fairly quickly. But reading is essential, and so it will read you through the instructions and directions on how to do it. So it's important to know um, that using the EpiPen, though, does not replace the fact that you actually need to follow up with emergency care, right? So if you're at your cookout, you eat a tomato or something you're allergic to, shellfish, you have shellfish, you ask for um, chicken alfredo and instead they inadvertently mixed shrimp and chicken alfredo and they decide, oh yeah, I'll just pick those shrimp out because she asked for this chicken and you eat it, yes. Um, lots of things go on in the kitchen, and so that's why it's important, one, say your grace over your food, uh, but two, it's important to have your EpiPen with you at all times, because sometimes the effect is minimized just based on the fact that you aren't actually eating the food, but it doesn't always take you eating the food. Sometimes it's just the mere touch of it in your mouth, in your salivary gland. Think about insects they're not on you very long but they give a little bite and they penetrate you just a little bit and it gives your whole body a reaction have you ever thought about that like it gives your whole body a reaction and it's within minutes so these things are important so if you have one 
make sure people who your family, make sure your family and some of your friends have or know that you have it. Yes, the instructions are written on the pen, but if you want demonstrations and a chance to practice on how to use it, that's what your first aid classes are for. Y'all know we teach first aid and we teach CPR classes. Um, so that's what your first aid classes are for, among many other things. But that's how you are helping other people who may not be able to help themselves. Because if you're having trouble breathing, if you need this pen, what kind of pen is this? This is an Epi pen. It's a pen that should be used in case of an emergency. You should also watch the expiration dates for your Epi pen because we really don't want you using your Epi pen. But I've seen people and I say, when was the last time you used your EpiPen? Oh, I haven't had to use it in years. Years with an F? Years? When was the last time we checked the expiration date on it? Because we need to make sure, like all other medicines, that it is actually in date. Right? So check the date on your EpiPen. Make sure that it is within um, your within the expiration date. I saw a patient the other day who talked about allergies, and I said, well, you have an EpiPen then, don't you? She said, I have an EpiPen, but I don't have my EpiPen. Here we go. Here we go. That's one of those uh, conundrums, huh? I have an EpiPen, but I don't have my EpiPen. What does that mean? What, what does that mean? Right? So, I'll, she had an extensive list of allergies, food allergies, Surprised she could eat anything. Um, and I said, well, you have an EpiPen because she didn't list that on her medicines. And she said, I have an EpiPen, but I don't have an Epi my EpiPen. Well, as I dug deeper, her purse had gotten stolen. So her purse had gotten stolen and in her purse was her what? EpiPen. And so because she has not used her EpiPen in months, she decided that, you know, I'll get all other things replaced in my purse, but I just do not feel like going to get an EpiPen. And because she had not used it in so long, she needed a visit with her provider. She couldn't just get a refill on it. That's how long she hadn't used it, which is good because we don't want people using EpiPens if they don't need to, right? But I also need her to have it in case she she needed it. So we um, were able to get that situation rectified but just know if you have an EpiPen you have it for a reason you need to make sure it's in date and don't let your response be I have an EpiPen but I don't have an EpiPen all right so make sure people around you know about the EpiPen now that's Monday it's 10 30 I did good tonight right y'all so I did well tonight I'm trying to keep this top 10 in about 30 minutes so you all can get back the rest of your night Make sure that you share the video out if you haven't already. Press that share button so you can share the video out to those who need to understand about an EpiPen. Because there are lots of people who don't, right? Lots of people who don't, who've never seen it, who look at this um, broadcast and say, yeah, I'm not sure what that is. So we need to make sure that people understand what an EpiPen is so that if they are exposed to one because of someone who is having an emergency, that they know the instructions are written on the pen but if they want an opportunity to practice and to know what to do with the EpiPen prior to that, that's where they need to take a first aid class, which we can help them if they're in this area. But if you're watching from anywhere else, I'm sure you can find one wherever you are. Any questions for me before we head out? Make sure you take a look. Choose you. You're going to see this. Registration is open for those who want to register to walk. If you can't walk, we talked about it. When your why is big enough, you will find your how. So you might say, oh, I can't participate in the walkathon, but your why to improve your health should be big enough to where you will find out how to make it happen, how to make you start being able to improve the face of health in our community so that it does no longer look like you and I, so that we can start changing some statistics so that we can Stop being at the forefront of all things as it relates to diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, and obesity. We have to be and do our part to help change that face. And so I am committed to helping make sure that happens. All right. So I will see you all back tomorrow night. Have a wonderful rest of your night. Thanks for the conversation and have a good night. Bye.